All right, so let's go. We're going to do. Uh, we're going to look at a sub base. How to create a sub base patch in Operator. Probably best if you've got a decent set of headphones or a subwoofer to listen to sub bass. But some of the techniques I'm going to show you will actually work almost better on a crappy pair of earbuds or something like that. Because we're going to show you how to use uh, harmonics and stuff like that to introduce uh, more more harmonics into the sound. We're going to use saturators to introduce more harmonics into the sound. So that if people are playing back your tracks on a, a subpar system that's not capable of creating those, uh, playing back those sub frequencies, you'll still hear it. So we've just got a standard sine wave here. Sine waves do not exist in acoustic instruments. They only exist in synthesizers. They are devoid of any harmonics. Any of this stuff you see down here is just signal noise. And if you have a look, it's down at negative 168 dB. So we're not actually gonna be hearing any of that sort of stuff there anyway. So for all intents and purposes, we're looking at a pure sine wave. D1, 72 hertz, lovely. The next thing we're gonna do is create, use the pitch envelope here to create a bit of a knock in the same way that you do when you're creating um, a kick drum. If I turn that pitch up and I increase the decay, you're gonna see straight away the pitch ramps down from 12 semitones above if it's set to 100. If it's set in between zero and 100, it won't be, it'll be somewhere between 12 semitones and 100. If I set it to 12, and I, we're gonna, gonna take it a little bit higher, but I'm gonna drop the decay, maybe 18, 20. This is just gonna give me a knock at the start of the note. It's difficult sometimes to hear the start of a sub bass note. So we're gonna create a bit of a knock. And right there, you can hear that we've got a nice attack to the note without it being too clicky or anything like that. That's with it on. If I turn the pitch envelope off, we bypass that. And we have a much less pronounced attack to the start of the note. We're gonna group this into an instrument rack. Command G, Control G on a PC. Open up the rack. and I'm gonna get that pitch envelope. I'm gonna map it to macro one so I can play with this later. And right knock. And now as I turn that up, you can hear the sound goes from an inverted one. I'm actually going to quickly do a, I'm going to map this so that it doesn't go to zero, negative 100%. It only starts at zero, so it means there's no pitch envelope there at that setting. And as I bring it in, next thing I'm going to do is just look at the envelope here. I'm going to make sure that the release is set to zero. If I set it too close, you'll hear there's a bit of a click as the note goes off, so I'm gonna intro I'm gonna go back probably to where I was. So there you have it. I'm also gonna change the voices to one. It's gonna be a monophonic bass line. Can't play chords one note at a time. And I might even just for a little bit, no, I was gonna me mess around with some glide values between it, between notes. That's not too bad actually, so I will have that. If I hit a note and then I play another one without releasing the first one, it's gonna glide between them. The glide time can be increased or decreased. And I'm going to map that guide time, glide time, sorry, to this macro here so that I can, even when I'm playing it, I can change it as I see fit. I'm going to do that same thing I did there, and I'm not going to have the highest value there to be 10 seconds. I don't think that's usable. I'm going to put it to 5 seconds, 5,000 milliseconds, and go out of map mode. So the highest time that I can now go with this macro is 5 seconds. And that means between notes, it's going to take 5 seconds. If I don't release the first note and I hit another note, it's going to take 5 seconds to get there. Probably more usable, around 50 
gives me a nice glide. But you also notice when I don't, when I use this glide functionality by holding a note, then hitting another, I also lose that knock at the start because we're not triggering a new note. So something to be mindful of. Okay, so one of the big problems you have with sub bass is that uh, only good systems can reproduce it. You produce it and, you, and you, you write a track in the studio and then when you get it somewhere else, you can no longer hear it and it's frustrating. So one of the ways um, you can get around that is by adding saturation and harmonics. Saturation is a great way of doing it and I'll put this saturator here before the spectrum so you can see it. And as I increase the drive here, you'll notice that a whole lot of harmonics come on and make it more audible. This control here, the bass, actually dictates at what point, how much the low frequencies affect the amount of distortion created. So as I turn it up, the low frequencies make it very distorted. Turn it down, you can see there's no harmonics at all. The bass frequencies are not doing anything, but if I play a high one, we are still getting some frequencies above the heart, the fundamental. So I'm gonna go back to these low octaves. I'm gonna increase this bass until I see some harmonics introduced there. We're gonna push it a little bit harder than I probably would wanna hear it. So as I said, the bass, the more I turn this up, more bass, the bass component of my sound distorts it, the less, the less the bass sound. For these kinds of things, I want the bass to be distorted. I don't want it to sound like that because it almost sounds like a, a square wave. And if I put an oscilloscope on what we're doing here, you would probably see that as well. I've got this great little Max for Life plugin and as we distort things, it stops being a sound, a sine wave, and rapidly ends up being a square wave. As you can see there, the more distortion I add, the square it, be the square it becomes until it goes from sine wave. So I still want to get the sine, the essence of the sine sound, which is the real essence of the sub. The way I'm going to do that is mixing it in. You can see there my... It's still sine shaped. I've distorted it a little bit, but I've still got a pretty sine wave looking and sounding sound. Turn the saturator off. I'm going to map that to macro 3 and call it saturation. Actually, I'm going to call it harmonics because that's what I'm interested in. And as you hear, I'll turn the saturator off. It's bringing up those extra harmonics. Each of the saturation presets here have different harmonics and different uh, sounds. So you can go through, experiment with them. I like that sinoid fold actually. It still really never gets up to a square wave, so it's really maintaining that that sine wave. But still giving me some extra harmonics nonetheless. So I've got a track here, just a few MIDI clips. That's with the saturator on, introducing harmonics, making it a little bit more audible in the higher frequencies. And turning it off, I'm going to introduce more so it's more pronounced. And you hear it becomes less audible when I turn the saturator off. So I'm going to turn the saturator on. I'm not losing any bass with my saturator. You can see here the bass frequencies are still there, but I am gaining a whole lot of upper frequencies. I'll just turn down that keyboard a little bit. 
turn the saturator off. So now as I experiment with the saturator, you'll notice that the as I experiment with the saturator, you'll notice that the gain of the sub bass should stay almost I've set it such that it should stay the same. As I bring it up the harmonics, you get a lot more audibility. If that's without it, I'll turn it back on. I might turn the knock down as I the saturation makes that knock more audible. And I could add ever so slightly some wobble to the bass sound. That's oscillating, that's changing the oscillator a lot. This LFO, but I'm just going to change it a few percent just to make it a little bit more unstable and I guess in a way bringing your ear uh, bringing the sound to your attention by making it not stable that's too much it's sounding out of tune just a little bit of oscillation down there helps your ear recognize that it's there so these are some tricks to make your bass works for bass drums and I could even show you that if I add a saturator similarly like this to my drums it's a really great way of adding presence to a kit a bass drum in particular using this bass to get more distortion from the bass drum or less that's way too much mixing it back and if you buy if I bypass this Base, the whole kit comes forward and uh, it's not it's not a, a game changer it's not a, a world changing uh, effect but these kind of subtle enhancement using distortion to uh, bring out our harmonics and make things sit in different places in the mix as a result are a really great way of uh, really giving your your mixes better playback on a number of systems which is what it's all about um, mix translation so that you're not having that horrible situation where it sounds good in your home system or wherever you, you produce normally, you play it on other speakers and all of the, all of your sub frequencies go all together. So by adding these extra harmonics, you find that systems which don't reproduce the low end as well can then still get the impression that there's some bass and it's more audible than it would otherwise be. So thanks very much for watching and uh, I'll check you next time.